Uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for being here today. My name is Mark Lorenz and I am the County Fire Chief of the Ventura County Fire Department. A quick message, even though we are increasingly gaining on the containment of this fire, it continues to grow, especially to the north. And my one message to everybody out there is just one of preparation. Always be ready. Uh, we have a statewide Ready, Set, Go program. So my message is, is one of preparedness. And with that, I'd like to introduce the Director of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, Mark Ghilarducci. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. So uh, w from a state statewide perspective, we've been coordinating the overall response to all the fires uh, that have been taking place here in, in the Southern Basin. Uh, certainly the Thomas fire here in, in uh, Ventura uh, um, remains the uh, priority and it continues to be of, of uh, great concern. Uh, let me say, first of all, uh, that we are um, extremely, uh, our thoughts and our, our, our prayers go out to those who have suffered loss and we will work closely with the city and the county to uh, work on programs that, that can help to uh, individuals to get some recovery. Um, early on from these fires, uh, the governor did declare a state of emergency and uh, that did open the door to ensure that all state assets and resources that could be made available were made available. Uh, there, in fact, there, there is no a resource that uh, the county or the city uh, is needing at this point to fight the fire that they haven't been able to get. And, and if there are, we'll make sure that, uh, that they have all the resources they need. Uh, currently, we, we have actually moved over 600 uh, fire departments, fire engines from throughout the state of California. And if you think about uh, the, that, that is a phenomenal effort by every uh, jurisdiction almost in California that has provided engines from the Oregon-California border down to San Diego. Given the fact that there are a number of other fires that are going on at the same time, uh, there's a big commitment and of that over, over that 613 uh, mutual aid fire engines, 435 are, are located here and that's not accounting all of the Cal Fire assets uh, and U.S. Forest Service assets that have been made available. Uh, in addition, uh, the governor authorized the uh, uh, deployment of the National Guard and uh, we have have uh, over 1,200 National Guard men and women uh, who have been deployed throughout the southern region and uh, over 120 or so that are committed here on this fire that are supporting uh, local law enforcement with regards to uh, traffic stops and perimeter control uh, and whatever else is necessary, as well as a number of aircraft, including the two C-130 MAF aircrafts that have been uh, based out of Channel Islands that have been working this fire uh, each and every day uh, and some, some great technology uh, that the military brings to help us do fire perimeter mapping, et cetera. Uh, as well, uh, the governors uh, provided the California Highway Patrol, uh, and they have been working with also local law enforcement, not only helping with evacuations and aircraft, uh, but in support of the sheriff and, and the police departments uh, as necessary. Um, Early on, we, we understood that this was going to be a siege that was going to uh, be significant throughout the southern uh, basin. The winds, uh, as you know, continue to be a concern. Um, and uh, we have been working closely to try to uh, push out uh, uh, preparedness information to the public just to be aware that, that these winds do exist and that means fire danger remains high. Uh, but in anticipation and the fact that we have uh, uh, utilized so much of the resources in California, We've also reached out to our neighboring states and, in fact, have received fire engines and, and other assets from Montana, Utah, New Mexico, Idaho, Arizona, Oregon, and Nevada. And, in fact, there are a number of those strike teams that are on this fire right now here uh, in, in Ventura County. Uh, we will continue to uh, work closely with the county. We have also uh, received what's called the Fire Management Assistance Grant from FEMA. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency has been a great partner with us right from the beginning. Uh, they're, they're based in the State Operations Center and they're also here in the field. Uh, and, and that Fire Management Assistance Grant was, uh, provides funding to the fire agencies to ensure that they have all the resources that they need, help, uh, helps offset the cost. Uh, and uh, just yesterday the governor did request of the president um, uh, what's called the uh, Federal Emergency Declaration. Uh, that's a, a, a declaration that provides direct federal assistance. That means technical assistance like equipment or technical assets that we can call on the federal government on uh, to support us, clarifies through the bureaucracy and ensures we get it when we need it. 
so the point is everything is being done uh, that uh, needs to be done in the firefight. And we are also now beginning the process of working on the recovery uh, and working with the cities and the counties to begin the process of how we are going to deal uh, with the losses that have taken place, not only uh, individual losses, but infrastructure losses on the part of, of local government. Uh, so with that, I will now turn it over to Chief Ken Pemlot from CAL FIRE. Thank you, Director Gelarducci. Ken Pimelot, Chief, uh, Director of CAL FIRE. So we're in uh, day six uh, of this wind event and uh, this fire siege that um, has impacted Southern California from Santa Barbara to San Diego. Uh, as Director Gilarducci uh, indicated, you know, this was a forecasted wind event uh, and, uh, you know, Southern California uh, is no stranger to sundowners or Santa Ana a wind, offshore wind events. Uh, certainly, I think we're all looking at this and, and, you know, what separates this from others uh, in the past. And I think, you know, we can all say it's this duration, uh, how long the winds have been here sustained, uh, as well as the dry conditions that uh, continue uh, throughout the Southland and just the intensity uh, of the winds, some cases very localized, but absolutely strong, intense winds uh, in all of the seven counties that have been impacted, uh, you know, throughout the, throughout the Southland. So uh, as of this morning, we have 8,500 firefighters uh, on the fire line um, across the six large fires that, that have occurred uh, as a result of this wind event. Uh, we burned uh, over 175,000 acres uh, and over 793 uh, structures uh, have been destroyed across these fires. Uh, we continue to make uh, real good progress uh, on all of these fires, uh, but we're far you know, from being out of the woods on, on any of them. And certainly here on the, the Thomas fire, this was the first fire you know, that started Monday evening at about 6.30 and uh, you know, continues to be uh, a very large uh, fire. As of this morning, the Thomas fire is 148,000 acres uh, and 15% contained. And we continue to work very closely uh, with all of the partners, so that, you know, there's an incident management team continuing to manage this incident in both Santa Barbara and Ventura County. It's a very seamless, unified effort between both counties, the U.S. Forest Service, CAL FIRE, uh, local law enforcement, uh, and uh, cooperation from across the board. Uh, as you heard from Director Gilarducci, there's almost a thousand fire departments in California, and all of them are engaged somehow, either here on these fires or covering fire stations uh, across the state to attack those new fires that start. Uh, but we continue to make progress. The Lilac Fire in San Diego that also started this week, this morning is 4,100 acres and 20% contained. The Creek Fire in Los Angeles County by uh, Silmar is 15,619 acres, 80% contained. The Rye Fire, there by Magic Mountain, 6,049 acres and 65% contained. Uh, and the Liberty Fire in uh, Riverside County, 300 acres, 90% contained. And the Skirball Fire uh, in Los Angeles, in the city of Los Angeles near Brentwood, is 475 acres and 50% contained. So uh, we're very pleased to start seeing these numbers come up. Firefighters are taking advantages of breaks in the wind and the weather to aggressively put in control lines, use aircraft and, and put in retardant and drop water uh, in support of the firefighters on the ground. But what we need to make clear is the winds are variable. They will continue to be uh, 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 strong and dry uh, well through tomorrow. And even into next week, we will have dry conditions across the south Land. So we need to continue to keep our guard up. Uh, it's December, and it's uh, amazing to be able to say that uh, we aren't out of fire season. And this is the challenge that we face uh, in California, and certainly here in Southern California, uh, that it is a year-round uh, challenge that we are all in. Uh, so with that, I would like to introduce the governor of California, our governor, uh, Governor Brown. Thank you. And first of all, I want to thank all the firefighters. Uh, from nearby and from, from further away, uh, doing a great job. I want to thank the National Guard, uh, the public safety people that are here, as well as the Conservation Corps and the uh, firefighters from the Department of Corrections. This is truly a, <clears throat> a joint effort on the part of a lot of people, and of course, everybody here that lives in this part of California. Uh, you're doing a good job too, and it's been a terrible tragedy uh, for so many people. So this is kind of the new normal. Uh, this kind of, I was just looking at my cell phone before I talked, uh, looking at the humidity. It's 8% in Los Angeles. I don't suppose it's much different right here. 
uh, <clears throat> that's very, very low. And so we're, gonna, we're facing a new reality in the state uh, where fires uh, threaten people's lives, uh, their property, their neighborhoods, and of course, uh, billions and billions of dollars. So we have to have the resources uh, to combat the fires, and we have to uh, also invest in managing uh, vegetation and forests uh, and all the way we dwell in this uh, very wonderful place, but a place that's getting hotter. And uh, we know from the changing in the climate that it's going to exacerbate everything else. Uh, from history, going back a long, long way, there have been very long droughts in California. Uh, we are getting some of those uh, returning very bad, and uh, we're going to get them returning more often. And then with climate change, uh, some scientists are saying Southern California is literally burning up, and burning up as a, maybe a, a metaphor or a description, uh, not just of the fire right here, but what we can expect over the next years and decades. And that's why we have to respond, but we have to plan what we can do in the, in the forests and the neighborhoods. And we also have to do the larger uh, challenge, which is climate change itself. And I know that's maybe a little remote, uh, but it's real. And we're experiencing uh, what it's gonna look like on a very regular basis. So I'm also doing everything I can there. And of course, that requires not just the people in in Ventura or Santa Barbara, or Los Angeles or San Diego, it requires people everywhere in the whole world. So uh, we have to pull together in the largest sense possible and take the heroic action that we need to make our, our communities livable now and into the uh, distant future. Thank you. I think we can take some questions if you have any. Well, one obvious theme is that some houses are burnt, and right next door, they're not burnt. So the vagaries of the wind, uh, perhaps the vegetation or the construction, all this combines together uh, to make uh, fires unpre unpredictable, even though we're learning more and more about them, and that's why the loss of life is, is so limited. But what can you say? When you lose your house and your belongings and... Uh, people lose their animals. It is a horror, and it's a horror we want to minimize, and when we can't minimize it, we want to recover from it as quickly as possible. What's that? Well, that's, you've heard, uh, uh, our fire chief tell you uh, these winds are still here, uh, the humidity is very low, and who knows? So you have to listen to what people are saying, get the um, alerts on your cell phone, and be ready to go. That's what it is. And also, a longer term, I think we have to really think through uh, how are we going to adjust ourselves uh, to nature as it changes. Uh, we can't expect nature to adjust to, uh, to our needs. Well, I think we ought to have a lot of information to every homeowner and potential homeowner on the best way to build or, or remodel. Uh, secondly, yes, we need good building standards. I would d just caution, though, I have in my office in Sacramento a box containing the current building code, and it's gotten bigger and bigger since the first time I was governor. It's good, we're getting more efficient, but when you say, more building standards, I always want to say, let's do this very carefully because it is complex. That does raise costs. So we have to, uh, we have to p protect, but I want to do it in the wisest way possible. Governor, uh, California obviously is known for uh, being a climate leader and doing a yep. lot in terms of climate change. Do you have any sense how much these fires are going to set back those efforts now? Well, the, uh, they're putting a lot of uh, carbon pollution into the environment, in the air. And that will offset a lot of hard-won reductions that we're making in California. But remember, this is a global problem. Uh, we're talking about the entire planet and the atmospheric chemistry 
and its composition. And we're trying to do everything possible uh, to make the atmosphere um, not absorb all these heat trapping gases. So uh, we have to do what we can. And that's one of the reasons why I've taken an international role here to uh, join with other states and provinces to cut their greenhouse gases. Yes, it's, it's a big problem. And that's why I want to see, are there ways that we can manage forests better? You know, are there ways that the U.S. government can manage its forests better? I think there are. And that's something that I'm going to be looking at uh, in, the, in the next uh, few months, because I think there's more there, and we need to do it. Well, uh, this, is, this is, uh, is the new normal, and this could be something that happens every year or every few years. I mean, it happens to some degree. It's just more intense, more widespread, and then we're about ready to have uh, firefighting uh, at Christmas. Uh, this is very uh, odd and unusual, but it is the way the world is with the kind of uh, carbon pollution that we're not only living with, but we're generating still. It's still increasing. We have to make that turn. It's going to take heroic efforts. Um, there are many places in this country that don't get it yet. There are several countries in the world that don't quite get it. So we're going to have to be good stewards of our own uh, neighborhoods and state, but also missionaries uh, to spread the word that we do need to make a change in the way we uh, bolster our economy, not with fossil fuel, but with uh, renewable energy. Well, so far, so good. We have been getting response. But, you know, when you look at it, Texas, Florida, uh, Puerto Rico, now California, this is tens and tens of billions of dollars. We were talking uh, last year about infrastructure and, uh, you know, all the money we're going to spend on roads and bridges in America. Well, now we just have to clean up the mess uh, that nature is causing. So I hope the folks in Washington realize that as they're uh, spending money uh, or helping others spend it by giving them various tax breaks, uh, we need to invest in our firefighting capacity. We need to invest in our, in our whole infrastructure as well as our energy uh, and, and means of storage. So we got a big agenda. It's not a time to do less. It's a time to do more. And unfortunately, the politics is so divided uh, that we have a lot of other things we're thinking about. But this is a topic. Fires, uh, floods, earthquakes don't go away. So we got to handle the basics uh, while we take care of other things that uh, politicians like to deal with. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Governor. All right. Well said. Okay.